Howdy. Como se va? I'm Danny Gregory, and it is Thursday, and it is time to draw with me and for me to draw with you. So that's what we're here for. That's what we're here to do. And I'm glad to see that some folks have shown up. That's very nice. And um, also, I wanted to point out that stunning gallery show that we just had of last week's efforts. So last week we did uh, a little bit of prep for traveling. We did a little bit of uh, epic landscaping in a giant zigzag uh, sketchbook from Hanamula, which accordions out. But the idea was really like, can we make some big, big sprawling landscapes? And as you saw, people took it in lots of different directions. There were um, marine scapes, there were literal landscapes, there were cityscapes, all kinds of things. So that was really great. Um, I'm glad to see that the weather seems to be fine everywhere, except here, of course. What's the temperature right now? It's not, only 97, so it's still quite cool here in Phoenix, AZ. But uh, I hope it's nice where you are. So lots of things to talk about today. Um, where should we begin? Well, let me begin by talking about something that is coming up soon in uh, 10 days, which is our next workshop. And I just want to remind you about that before we plunge into today's assignment. So let's check it out. Hey, David Pyle here. We're going to head out into the great out of doors and paint. I'm going to take you on a walk and show you different options for the kinds of image or landscape that you might want to work from. And then we're going to work together to build a painting. We're going to talk about composition. We're going to talk about my tools and the toolkit that I've developed over the last 40 years and why I think it's worked well for me. But most importantly, we're going to talk about the adventurous frame of mind that it takes to get out there and enjoy the process and enjoy making art in the great out of doors. Come join us. We're going to have a blast. We are going to have a blast. So that's my buddy, David Pyle. David and I have known each other for years, and I have always admired his watercoloring and his intense knowledge about just about everything to do with art, art supplies, and particularly watercolor. So I said to him, what if we did the equivalent of like going away for a weekend and really getting deep with some watercoloring? And so that's what this is. It's two days, Saturday and a Sunday. I spend a couple hours each day painting with David in the uh, beautiful horse farm in the mountains of Colorado and just really, really learn about this stuff and figure it out from a guy who knows his oats, feels his oats, knows his stuff, is really smart about watercoloring. <laughs> Let me stop mangling the English language. So yes, um, that's on the horizon and you can sign up for it at sketchbookschool.com. So I hope that you will do that here. Here's a sign up thing. No, that's not how you sign up. I make this mistake every time. Go to sketchbookschool.com to our workshop section or look at the thing down below. All right, so that is that. Um, I want to send a shout out to somebody, which is Grace. Grace, I sent you an, a video message. Look for it in your email. Watch it. It's important. That'll scare her. Okay, so it's my new thing, sending out little video messages to people to... Uh, see how they're doing. It's a lot less trouble than having to clickety clack on the keys. So um, what else today? You know, as you know, um, today's a very special day, very important day. And uh, do you know what it is? I'll wait to see what you th what you think today is. Tell me. What is today? Sonia? Gebhardt in Germany, what is today? Ash 13 Brook, welcome. What is today? What's important about today? Tell me. Sabine, Yoli, Luna, Pegasus Girl 1, Celeste, come on. Some of you folks must know. Recycling Day, close. Watercolor Appreciation Day, hmm. Correct. Correct. Where is it? Correct. Here we are. It's Marty's birthday. Today is Marty Feldman's birthday. 
Marty would have been, oh, God, he would have been really old. It's an international draw your cat day. Possibly. We're not celebrating it, though, because we're dog people. I joke. Yes, we should draw cats again. It's been a long time. But yes, going back to Marty's birthday. So Marty Feldman. Marty Feldman is a, if you don't know who he is or was, he was a comedian, an actor, a director, as it turned out. Um, and he was, uh, he died quite young. He died uh, in his 40s. He smoked five packs of cigarettes a day. So, and drank apparently endless amounts of coffee. So, not entirely surprising, but nonetheless, he was taken from us too young. One of the many things that I like about him is Monica Suxic drawing humans. <laughs> yes, but we're, we're drawing Marty Feldman, so. Marty Feldman, who is he? Dr. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. You're putting me on. No, it's pronounced Frankenstein. Do you also say Froderick? No, Frederick. Well, why isn't it Froderick Frankenstein? It isn't, it's Frederick Frankenstein. I see. You must be Igor. No, it's pronounced Igor. But they told me it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? Of course. I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. Oh, sorry. I, uh, you know, I don't mean to embarrass you, but I'm a rather brilliant surgeon. Perhaps I could help you with that hump. What hump? What hump, indeed. So that's Marty Feldman. Now, of course, remember him. And uh, that's a scene from Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein with Gene Wilder. So yes, so um, yeah, so Mari Feldman was, he was directing a movie in Mexico and he had a heart attack. I'm hearing various stories he was broke when he died. I don't know, he was directing a movie. How broke could he have been? I don't know, somebody else said he, Janice asked if he drowned. No, he apparently had a heart attack in his hotel room. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let's celebrate his life or more importantly, let's celebrate his eyes because yet he he's just an extraordinary looking person and that's what intrigued me about him that's why i wanted to draw him today um so he apparently had uh he had what is it called um i can't remember the condition anybody knows out there what his condition was um anyway he had he was born with is it graves disease i think and his eyes were obviously slightly protruding, but he also had, apparently he was in a car accident, he had a broken nose. He was just an unusual looking person. He had a lot of interesting features, Graves' disease, yes, hyperthyroidism. Right, so, um, yeah, so I think that that is interesting because, you know, we often talk about drawing caricatures, but here's a person who sort of looks a bit like a caricature, right, off the bat. And then the question is like, what can we do with him you know, and also, what can we learn? Because a lot of times when you... Sorry, I'm, I'm sharpening this pencil that is, keeps breaking on me. Um, a lot of times when we study faces, we learn things about how faces are put together. And when people have exaggerated features, it can really help us to understand, like, how do certain features... Like, how are they really put together stuff that can help us to draw really anybody? Um, so, yes, as JJ says... Twiglet is also, uh, as we say, one eye on the bread, one eye on the butter. So, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so a lot of um, interesting things about it. So we can, again, all you people out there who are griping about drawing people, people who draw people are the luckiest people in the world. And drawing people is fun and interesting, and it's like drawing anything else. Now, here's what I want to do. When we draw Marty Feldman, we're not drawing Marty Feldman. We're using Marty Feldman as a, just an opportunity to play, to play, to use his features as an opportunity to play. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to play with Marty. And, you know, nobody's going to judge whether or not it actually looks like him. Who cares? Honestly, who wants a really accurate drawing of Marty Feldman? No, that's not what we want. So, all right. Linda does like drawing people. Good. 
It's time. It's high time. As Sarah says, think of it as a character, not a human. It's true. It's true. You could think of it as drawing Winnie the Pooh. You could think of it as drawing Bart Simpson. You could think of it as drawing a, a pile, of, a bowl of fruit. First, we're going to draw his apples. Then we're going to draw his banana, etc. However you want to do it. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's have a look at what, we, what we're working with today. So yeah, so I want to use this Hanamula paper. This is Hanamula watercolor paper, oh, and it's designed for watercolors, obviously. It's, uh, you know, 300 grams. It's nice and chunky and thick. However, I'm only going to be partially using watercolor today. I may not be using watercolor at all. In fact, we'll see how it goes. What I am going to be using, though, is these inks, which I've become obsessed with. These Windsor Newton inks. I started using them last week. I showed you them, and I have been playing with them ever since. I, I'm fortunate in that I have thousands of them now in every conceivable color. You know, and I used to use, there was a thing that I loved for a long time, Dr. P.H. Martin's um, transparent watercolors. And they were kind of like this, but with a kind of a big difference. And they also come in these beautiful boxes. So what was different about these inks is that when you draw with ink or when you paint with ink, it locks in. It's no longer waterproof. So you can you can go over it. But this stuff looks to me, in many ways, it has many of the qualities of watercolor. It's transparent. You can layer it. You can mix it. But then when it's dry, which it dries pretty quickly, as you'll see, it becomes, uh, you can, it's waterproof. So you can, you can do stuff on top of it without having to worry about reactivating it. So I like that. So yeah, so it works great on this worker. So here's, I've been fiddling around. Marty and I have been playing all week. Let me just show you what we've been doing. And so I started out with this. Um, yeah, so this is, this is all that ink, ink here, and then colored pencils. And uh, I think I use some markers too. So I might pull out some markers as well. But, you know, it looks... It's not realistic, but you know. And then I did this. I just kept thinking about exaggerating him because I realized when I did the first one, I didn't really push it, didn't exaggerate it, you know. But this, you know, there's something about him. There's a an elfin quality to him as well, despite the strange eyes. You know, he has really he has really cool eyes. Also, they're really light colored, light colored. We'll have a look at a picture of him in a minute, and then you'll see. But he's got these, there's just very, lots of different interesting things about him. Then I kind of went, I don't know, I went here and I just really pushed it um, and exaggerated it even further. I really wanted to get into, as you'll see when we start looking at photos of him, there is, uh, he has like his eyes have these layers, like a seashell almost. So let's get on to that and have a look at his face. Let's see. Now look at that. Come on. That is a great face, right? It's great. It is. His, I mean, his eyes are large, first of all, and uh, they are. Um, he has he has really kind of thick eyelids. And wait, wait, watch this. First of all, I mean, what a. That is such a crazy expression. Imagine like this guy came up to you. I don't know. I mean, I'm not surprised that he was a movie star. He, In fact, I read a quote from him somewhere where he said, you know, that he was really fortunate that he wasn't better looking. Because he said, if I'd been good looking, I would have just been like another actor. You know, I would have just been some other actor. But, you know, and he has like a very intense Cockney accent. And, uh, you know, he said, but the fact that I look like this was kind of like that's what made me appealing. This, this drawing, is this photo is a little bit much for me. It looks like his eyes are going to pop out of his head. Um, but again, it's, his hair is interesting. You know, he's sort of this 70s guy. Um, yeah, as David said, he has dimples. Watch this. Um, that one is kind of cool. Again, you see the eyes sort of going in different directions, which is cool. And then um, this one. That is really, I mean, there you really see those eyes. So... If you want to, I'm going to have these pictures small here so that I can draw on the other side. But if you want to, just Google him. You will find so many interesting images of his face. 
and uh, how exaggerated they are. But this one, there you really see those dimples that uh, Dave was mentioning. Um, these lines here, and then the lines around his eyes, and then look at his nose. Look at that kind of shape of it. So, man, it's just a great face. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of the pictures that I found um, are the pictures shared somewhere. They're, picture, they're shared on Google. You can get them. Just go to Google Images, type in Marty Feldman, and they're there. I'm not. I didn't upload them for you today because here's the thing: is I don't want to draw. I don't want to copy a photo of Marty Feldman. I want to just be inspired by him, by his face, and I want to see where we go with it. Okay, so um, we are going to just muck around and see what happens. And I'm probably going to be. Don't fall in love with any one of these pictures too much because I'm almost certainly going to be swapping back and forth between them. I'm going to be jumping around so that we can, you know, just look at different aspects of them. <laughs> okay. I'm going to jump in with some ink. I think I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take this. This is called Nut Brown. Nut Brown paint. Ink. Paint. All right. So I'm taking, so I'm just taking this brush and uh, it's a number 10. So it's a pretty big fat one. And let's see, you know. Because his eye is sort of a slanting, slanting a bit. I'm sort of I'm intrigued by this nose business. I'm also intrigued by his nose in some ways, as by his eyes, because they're like, his nose is, it looks like it's really hard. It's not like a flexible, rubbery snout like I have. It looks like it's sort of very... Very sort of, I don't know, cartilagey, cartilaginaic. So, so yeah. So I'm gonna. I don't really like this kind of whole bowler hat business that he's wearing in the whatever movie he's in in this picture. So I'm probably gonna ignore that. That's what I would when I did those other drawings that I showed you. That's what I did. I was just like, I'm going to make up my own stuff. Because another thing I like about him is he's he's kind of a 70s dude as well. And that makes his whole like um, sideburns and polar neck, turtleneck thing kind of cool too. I think it's sort of like part of the, the style of him. I'm actually, this one is kind of looking more sinister Unless, maybe, so maybe that's what I'm inspired by him, because he is kind of sinister. I think, even though he's, you know, that he is always sort of smiling, and a lot of times if you watch him, there's something very sinister and eerily, eerie, sort of threatening. Like, you know, he seems unhinged a lot of the time. Not just the way he looks, but the way he behaves. He has this kind of quality to him of like, of a, of a I don't know, just a maniac. So I like that aspect of him too. So yeah, so I'm, and then that smile, sort of thin lips, but also like, again, somewhat sinister, like the Joker or something like that's what he's like, the Joker, you know? So yeah, so, and then, you know, the whole sideburn business. And then I also, another thing I like about him is the whole, is, is curly hair, which you can't see in this picture. And that's why we're going to probably go to uh, some other reference for that. I've also found that when I've been drawing him, and I've drawn him as, a, as I showed you a number of times now, um, I end up drawing his irises last. And I don't feel like I ever have entirely captured what's really so impactful about those eyes because as you can see they're super super light mm -hmm. super light so that you know he's like a 
He's like a husky or something with those eyes. And that, that I think, gives him another eerie aspect. All right, so, so now if I had done this in watercolor, I would be worried at this point because I would be like, okay, I've done this drawing in watercolor, but now what's going to happen is it's going to get ruined if I go over it with anything. But I don't have to worry about it now because this is ink. This is waterproof ink. So yeah, there we go. Clean up the old brush. Let's get into some other colors though. Um, so this is a slightly darker brown, I think. It's called Pete Brown. Oh, I mean, my name's Pete Brown. Oh, there we go, Pete Brown. Pete Brown, it sounds like a, like a goalie or something. Yeah, you see? It's a bit darker. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so because I'm because I'm kind of thinking also, why not attack this with various media? That's probably what we'll do. All right. So the, and this I also like the fact that this dries, you know, nice and quickly, nice and quickly. Um, so weigh us down at all. We were not sitting around waiting for watercolor to, to dry. Although we might be struggling with opening the bottles. Um, yeah, so let's see how, how dry is this. It's pretty dry. Take paper towel. Doesn't, I don't really care that much that this picked up some of this because I'll go back in and uh, knock it out. But, but what I am thinking of doing is I have this real, this, this is like a one inch brush, one inch brush. So how do I deal with a one inch brush? Because here's the problem with a one inch brush. What do you do with a one inch brush? You can't fit a one inch brush into a tiny little hole like that. So I have fortunately standing by this. So I can just take this and uh, slap it on like that. Whoa, nice. Look at that color. Again, this is what I loved about about using transparent watercolors, but I could never, you know, count on them to stick and not get all screwed up by other media that I put on top of them. But this is ink, so it's good. Um, what else? I think we need something a bit darker. What is this? This is orange. I'm going to try dropping a little bit of orange right into the yellow. You might own some of these little bottles, and I bet you've been sitting on them. Oh, yes, one of these days I'm going to do something with them that's really cool. And you've been being really precious about them. Watch me. I'm going through like half a bottle and doing this one thing because I just, I don't care. They're, they're still pumping out more stuff. Windsor Newton has, their factories are now standing by, working around the clock, making sure that there is um, plenty of ink. So you can always use it up and they, there will be more in the store more in the store. So don't worry about that. Don't be stingy. No one likes a stingy artist. Okay, so now let's have a look at, at some other reference. You see, what's interesting about this one is you really get a sense of the thickness, leatheriness, chunkiness of um, those Eyelids, they're really thick eyelids, really thick. And I like that, interested in that. So I could go back to brushes and a little bit of this. I could do a bit of that. But And also, you know, you see, I'm using this reference. Again, I'm not copying the photo. I'm just looking 
at what are his eyelids like? What can I learn about his nose? I'm learning some other stuff about his nose from this angle. And um, even this. And then that. So yeah, you learn more stuff from different references. And you put it together into your own composite. That's the whole idea. Again, don't feel like you have to just do a drawing or a painting of a photograph. We don't need that. That already exists. What's more interesting is what are you going to do with it? Where are you going to take it? Um, I thought I had a reddish color of some kind. Vermilion, I do. All right, so I this vermilion. I'm going to pull out some markers. I have these, I have um, lots of these. These are, these are pro marker brushes and they are, they're kind of brush like, but they're of course markers. So, and again, I don't worry about using markers on watercolor paper. What the hell are you doing, dude? It's okay. I think, it, I think it's fine. I don't know. I might get an angry, note from somebody, picky somebody at Windsor Newton saying, uh, don't use our markers on watercolor paper. Or the Honolulu people might say, um, excuse me, it's called watercolor paper for a reason. But in the, in the meantime, I will live in ignorant bliss, mucking around here with these. But so let's have a look here. Also, what's interesting is that the top of his eyelid here is actually much lighter than I've made it. So can I pull it back now? So I'll just, I think I'll just go in the opposite direction and make this part darker underneath here. Yeah, but so you you can notice that he has this real, um, you know, this there's thickness to the eyelids because they have a top and they have sides. And the top is much lighter because it has light shining on it. It's a three-dimensional object. You don't really think of eyelids that way. You think of them as being sort of just little doors or flaps, but do doors and flaps have dimension to them also, and that is what makes it interesting. That's what makes them feel like they have volume. So what else? I could bring in some colored pencils, you know, because they can allow me to kind of make a harder line. Part of the problem I have right now is the paper's a bit wet. You know, if I wasn't in a hurry to impress you, I might put this aside for a little while and let it dry but it's your fault that I am rushing. And uh, they have it. Thanks a lot. How's yours coming along? What are you struggling with, if anything? Or are you 
blissfully inspired. Let's have a look at another picture and see where that takes us. What does this picture tell us? In some ways, this picture is kind of in the ballpark of where I am now, right? Sort of a similar angle. You can really see how much darker things are in here. And that is definitely something I need to address so I can kind of get into darkness in here. Hello, my old friend. This nose is a little hard to draw. Well, unlike you, I've, this is the fourth time I've drawn it. I find that every time you draw something, you learn more about it. So feel free to spend the week drawing Marty. I did, and it was a profitable experience. So. But you see, again, this is not usually how you would think of ink. You would normally think of ink as not being a layering kind of device. You would think of it as being something that you put down and that's the ink line, you know? But painting with ink, particularly colored ink like this, will change your opinion of ink, I think. I think of ink. Good ink, good ink. So yeah. All right. So I had a hair dryer here. It might speed things up. How many times have I almost put my brush into my coffee cup? Many times today. What else can we learn about his forehead here from this picture? A little bit of that going on. He has a really strong brow line. Let's have a look at another picture of him. See, it's almost like he has a corduroy forehead. There's a bit of a divot right there between his eyes. So again, we're not trying to copy him. We're not necessarily even trying to make a portrait of him, but we are looking at interesting features of his face and saying like, how can we take those features of his face and put them into this person that we're making, which may or may not be Marty Feldman. It may just be Marty Feldman inspired, which is perfectly legal, not a violation of his copyright as a person. And I'm sure he was copyrighted. I mean, he's so unique looking that you would think they would want to patent that. As you keep adding layers, it also is changing as they, as they dry, as they interact a little bit with what's going on on the levels below. But bring, coming back in with a slightly darker color is just making it feel a bit more um, 3D, dimensional. Now, what about this one? This picture, you really see those lines under his eyes. It's interesting also to look at a black and white picture, you know, where you really see the contrast um, and it, it's showing you really what the kind of light balance on his face is. So... What is this? 
Kunal has used a lollipop stick. Interesting. In so you're dipping a lollipop stick into what? Into ink? Yeah, that would be cool because that would be it would probably give you some interesting lines and uh it probably won't give you the kind of softness that I'm getting though. If that's what you want if that's what you're looking for. Okay, so I'm feeling the temptation to do like a much, much darker line, and I really know that that will ruin it. Like this part of me wants it to say, like, I know, get out the black. That would be a really bad idea. What if I took a little bit of blue, though? I'm a little bit scared, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it with a smaller brush. This is uh, number four. Right in the eyebrows, they're kind of a forgiving place. Yeah, you see, that's not bad. It's giving a bit more, because the blue is not really looking like blue, right? It's looking because it's the complement of orange. It's just making a kind of a gray, you know, but it's, uh, yeah, that's good. See, this is why this watercolor paper is so good because I am, I'm. If this was any kind of lesser paper, it would have started to shred and collapse at this point. You know, with all these layers of ink and brushing and scrubbing and doing all the things that I'm doing to it. You know, but if you start with a decent platform, which is your watercolor paper, um, then you know it's going to stand up to whatever you throw at it. So I'm cool with that. All right, what's going on down here? Not so good. Let's pull it back a bit. Not the end of the world. Actually kind of an interesting effect. So yeah. All right, now let's move in for the kill. I think I'm going to have to go back to my original reference here. difference in iris makes, doesn't it? It certainly gives it much more personality and expression. And this pencil is, this is, a, this is, it's a nice bushy soft uh, Windsor Newton pencil, but it's not, um, it's not, war, it, it's not a water, sorry, it's not a watercolor pencil. I have colored pencils like that that are watercolor pencils. And that means that they're not, um, you know, they're going to break down if you run a brush over them. But this one, let's see if I have a clean brush that I can show you with. This one, you see, I can rub the water over it. It's not, it's not harming it. It's not going to change it. And that's pretty important at this point. And also, like, what are we going to do with the actual iris, you know? Kind of like that. I'm also thinking that I do want to get a reddish pencil and see what I can do with this business in here because this this is sort of one of the parts of his eyeballs that are sort of important. I imagine something like that going on there. And now this is dry enough that I can come in with this pencil. And I can really start to make a difference. And I might want to bring in a darker blue pencil like this one to again help out with just just making a difference between these things, between these kind of concentric lid flaps, eyelid flap, whatever they're called, eyelids. Yes, he seems to just have more eyelids than a normal person, but.
so. Obviously his pupil is black, but I'm doing it first in blue. I just want to see what it was like. Would it take me too far? Because I don't want this to look too like startlingly graphic somehow. Ah, Rose is doing an appropriate. That's a good idea. Yes. I haven't worked in appropriate in a few months. It's time to get that dust off the old iPad. What did Annie do? She says, I started with an ink brush pen, but found out quickly I had no ink left. Interesting. Gouache and oil pastels. Yeah, that's an interesting comment. I don't never really work with pastels. Um, in part because I always feel like they're going to smear like crazy inside my sketchbook. But then maybe I should try them. They're certainly nice and squishy to play with, right? Got to be really careful with these eyes. It's so, be so easy to go too far. I also want to try and make his the whites of his eyes seem a little three dimensional. You can see. See, like in here. I mean, I guess it's eyelashes, but it doesn't really look like eyelashes, does it? Well, I've got this blackout. I am now comfortable enough to go in and just highlight that pupil a bit. Yeah, if you make the pupil the right kind of darkness, he seems alert, he seems aware. If you go too far, Cartoony, too cartoony. See, because we can also. It looks kind of like he's got like a dirty nose now, which I'm not that happy with. I don't know. I'd like to pretend that I know exactly what I'm doing in so many areas of my life, but um, I'm just kind of seeing how these things react to each other. And this ink stuff is new to me. So there's lots to learn about how it reacts. And, you know, sometimes you want like a nice bleeding line and sometimes you don't, you know, so you have to kind of decide what to do. I think what I need to do is uh, have a sip of coffee. All right. So I'm sort of thinking that this area down here maybe needs to be darker. I mean, like it is in this photo, but also there's a lot of like kind of black turtleneck things going on with him. So let's have a look at the him and the turtleneck again. Bit of a neck. Something about the tur the turtleneck, though, that you know, it's like uh, a lot of times this kind of sort of somewhat sinister character will wear a turtleneck. What if I just throw down some black? So this is black drawing ink. It's not India ink. So um, I'm hoping that means it's not going to be. Yeah, it's not. It's not overwhelmingly black. It's kind of a warmish black. And you can, yeah, that's good. All right. Pretty good. Um, I like that black. Now I think I need to go back in and do some more stuff in the hair here. So 
this is, I'm using a marker again here. And even though I have the blue there, it's okay. The blue can go underneath. Like now using the fat side of the marker. And then I think I'm going to go in with some orange pencil. I just like having a bit of texture in this, these flat areas. It feels a little flat to me. So I'm making it feel a bit more rugged, a bit more interesting to look at. Sometimes I overdo this part of it and it kind of ruins it. So I'm trying to be somewhat measured, but measured isn't really one of my things. Darker. This is a darker orange. Interesting. Mandarin. Okay, sorry. Let me see. Let me show you what I'm doing. See? Yeah, the pencil's just, you know, I don't want to make super hard lines out of them necessarily. I just am trying to create just some, some little hatchings and texture that just make it feel like stuff is going on in the shadows, maybe. Like this whole part just feels really not right. So Phew. Oh my God. I'm, I'm sorry, I realized I'm like I'm running out the clock and it's crazy and I shouldn't be because I want to show you a couple of other things. So I'm gonna stop here. I really am. I'm gonna stop here. It's interesting. I think I'll keep working on it. But I want to show you a couple of other things before we run out of time, which we're about to do. So here's one thing I want to show you. Um, as I mentioned, uh, David, who is here, I think, in the comments. That was nice to see him. David um, just sent me a little tour of his sketchbook. You know, we, we have this new feature where we're showing a sketchbook every week, just a quick flip through. And so I thought that would be cool to show David's and uh, check it out. Windsor Newton is sponsoring this particular little tour. We do one at the end of each week. Check it out and maybe this will inspire you.
so good, isn't he? I just love this. I love that style of drawing. I never draw that way, but his way, like he really is creating like stuff that feels so dimensional, really gorgeous. Um, and his drawings of musicians, he, uh, he's a musician. He comes from, there's a family full of musicians. He's always, he's doing stuff with the, the opera company in his town right now. So I'm sure he'll tell us more about that. I think David's going to join us live next week and we'll talk more about some of this stuff, but that was really inspiring and cool. So, all right, good. Well, um, so let me see what else did I want to tell you? I wanted to say, um, yes, I want to see your Marty Feldman's. So post them somewhere on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever you want, and put hashtag SBS draw with me and we'll find them and we'll, have a cavalcade of Marty's next week at the beginning of the show. That will be fun. Or if you're a member of the schoolyard, of course, just post them there with uh, and tag and draw with me, and we will find them. That will be really cool. Okay. What else? Uh, Danny'sEssays.com. I write one every week. I'm gonna write one tomorrow and send it out. And uh, it's just an essay about creativity, about stuff that we as artists think about. And if you need a bit of help, or even a bit of inspiration, a bit of titillation, a bit of, I don't know, entertainment, sign up. It's free, and I'll send it to you tomorrow, okay? David's Plein Air Watercolor Workshop. Again, you have a week left to sign up for it, but don't dawdle because you want to get your stuff together. So sign up now and get it going. And um, what else? Oh, yes. Subscribe to this channel. If you subscribe, you'll know when the next Draw With Me is going to be. And also, I'm making these new video essays. I just finished one. I'm going to be posting it in the next day or two. And uh, if you do it, if you subscribe by clicking the subscribe button, if you ideally like things, that apparently makes some kind of difference. But also, if you click the bell, the bell will tell you when there's a new thing going on. And uh, that, will be, that will be of some help to you, I hope. And what else? Um, oh, yes, I want to thank our sponsors, Windsor Newton ink, colored pencils, brushes, markers, man. And Hanamura, thank you again for a beautiful paper, not in a sketchbook this time, but a block of solid Hanamura 300 pound watercolor paper. Couldn't have done Marty without you. So thanks so much. And thanks for supporting Sketchbook School and Draw With Me. We really appreciate it and hope that you guys We'll support them too when next time you go out to buy some paper, which I hope you're going to be doing soon. So thank you again for joining me here today, for drawing with me. Um, we're not going to have any more after parties if you're a Spark member. Instead, I have a new thing called Box of Chocolates. I'm going to be doing the first one today. Box of Chocolates. Why Box of Chocolates? Because you never know what you're going to get. But it'll be tasty, I promise. So we're going to have some fun doing that. Um, and that's about it. Thank you all for joining me. For you folks who are new, I hope you had fun, and I hope that you will join me again and draw with me next week. It was great to see you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.